please welcome Annie Meehan. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am average, and I like to be average. Because the thing is, if you go to a movie and people tell you it's amazing, how many of you leave disappointed? So I have decided my very favorite introduction is here's Manny, Annie Meehan, and she is mediocre. Because from mediocre, you can go up, right? And so today I'm here to teach you in this short time a thousand, maybe a hundred thousand words. And if you catch one or two of them, I'm going to be happy. I'm here to teach you about my book, Be the Exception. You see, in a world full of experts, people that are better than, I just want to be the exception. And the thing about being the exception means I don't have to be better than you. I can be as good as you and you can choose to be the exception too. So I have a book for each of you to invite you on this journey of how do you become the exception? What does it mean? And what it really means, and you've heard some of it already, is live by choice. Get up every morning and decide how you're going to show up. Nobody needs more to do on their to-do list. That is plenty long enough. But what if you need ways to be? So there are seven ways to be in my book. And I like to invite people to be the exception. What does it mean? What does it mean to be the exception? To live out life exceptionally. And there's seven steps, but really they're ways of being they're just more principles to live a more intentional, authentic life. We hear those words, but we often don't get taught, what does it mean? And I think the first step is be honest. And people say to me, I don't lie. And I said, well, maybe not. And maybe the opposite of honest isn't lying. It's the stories. You see, I think if you ask me, I tell the truth. But inside my head, there's those messages, those tapes that play over and over. I'll never get the sale. I never get the sale. It won't work for me. I've tried before. It never works out for me, that negative message that we repeat. And the thing is, if we repeat a story enough, it becomes our truth. Not that it necessarily is the truth, but my question to you is challenge what you tell yourself. Challenge what you tell yourself about other people, what you say about them, and what you say about yourself to other people. It's so easy to play small. And I don't think we need to be arrogant, but I think we need to show up confident. Each and every one of you in this room are great at something. So be honest with yourself. Tell the truth. What are you great at? The second thing is be open. I love to teach about mentorship, role models. I auditioned for a TV show called Genuine Hero, and it was about who's your hero and why. But not just who's your hero and why. What have you learned from them that you've applied in your life and you continue to teach other people? And so for me, I didn't really resonate with the word hero. I apologize to all you sports fans. I don't know any sports people. I'm sorry. I'm not great at that. But I know people that I look at and I emulate. I want to be like. So I think more rather than hero, role model, or who lit your path. Was it a parent? For me, I didn't have a mom or dad that was able to be that light for me. So I was always looking around. Could it be a teacher? Maybe a boss or a neighbor? Who lit your path? Who was a role model to you? And what I want you to know is whether you think it or not, you are a role model to many people. People are watching you and what you do, even when you don't know. Just a few years ago, one of the only times, oh, well, to be honest, the only time I got booed, I was speaking in Iowa. And I was sharing this story. I thought people had booed me, but I wasn't quite sure. You see, I was traveling to Iowa because I capture each of my children. I have three children, ages 28, 22, and 18. And I make sure they pick five colleges, something I didn't get to do. And then I say, at least one of them has to be three hours away, because here's the deal. If you got teenagers and you kidnap them and lock them in the car, whether they mean to or not, they will accidentally talk to you. It's the greatest thing in the world. And so we were driving to Iowa, and we were going to visit Iowa State. That's the reason I got booed. Half the room was Hawkeye fans. Who knew? I didn't know people boo you for that, but it's the truth. And we were driving to Iowa, and my son, my youngest, turns to me and goes, Hey, Mom. I'm like, yeah? He goes, um, I'm like Dad. I go, okay. But I mean, seriously, like, I'm a lot more like Dad than you. I'm like, all right, maybe. No, seriously. Dad and I are alike, and we're not like you. What does that mean? He said, well, I've been thinking about something. Thinking about something? Yeah, I've been thinking about something for five years. What? Who thinks about anything for five years? <laughs> and then he says this, you see, you talk and then think, but dad and I, we think, we think a little bit more, then we think just a little bit more, and then we decide if we're going to talk or not. Who knew you could decide if you're going to talk or not? <laughs> I had no idea that was an option. And so he said, and I've been watching dad from the back seat since I was 12. What? I said, okay. And he goes, yeah, there's a weird thing about dad. I'm like, let's talk about the weird things about dad. I got a list. 
He said, calm down, Mom. We're not talking about everything. I said, okay, well, well what's so weird about Dad? He said, well, I'm watching Dad from the back seat, and it's kind of weird. You see, Dad drives with his left hand, and it's weird because Dad's right-handed. And when you used to go, when you old people, that'd be me, went to driver's training, it was 10 and 2. But now, because of airbags, it's 9 and 3. But Dad drives with his left hand, which is weird, because even though he can throw a ball with his left hand, he throws it with his right hand. What are we talking about? <laughs> right? Like, I'm glad you're telling me something, but I have no idea what it is. I'm glad you waited five years. I don't know what we're talking about. And then he says this. I figured it out. You see, I figured out why Dad drives with his left hand, Mom. You see, Dad drives with his left hand so that he always has his right hand available to hold yours whenever you'll hold his. To be honest with you, I think I wanted to bust out crying in that moment, thinking, oh my gosh, I was a little girl that grew up that believed all men were abusive and their hands were used to hurt other people. And here is my youngest, without any words, without any knowledge of myself or my husband, that he is seeing that hands are used for good. And if I'm honest with you, it's a little embarrassing, but I never noticed. Yes, occasionally my husband holds my hand, but I never noticed. I never noticed that he did it intentionally, that his hand was here and his hand was here. But I was a role model. You see, people are watching you even when they don't tell you. And they most likely won't tell you. Are you kind to the people behind you in the checkout line? Do you set down your phone when you're walking through customer service and somebody sees you? Or are you too just busy, caught up in what's in it for me? You see, we need to be open to be a mentor. But we also need to be open to mentoring others with our words and our actions. Be healthy. I talk a lot about health. I care a lot about your physical health. But I don't care about your number on the scale or the size of clothes you wear. I care about the energy you bring into this world. I own a gym. I've done that for 11 years. But what I love to teach people is do something that you love. What are you good at? What are you great at? Find what you love and go outside and play. I think I'm an amazing dancer. I mostly do it inside my house. Occasionally I go outside and my neighbors ask me if I'm swarmed by bees. You have to have a perspective. But find something you love and move your body every day. Enjoy. Have fun. The next step is be flexible. You know, people will say there's two guarantees in life, death and taxes. But isn't there a third and isn't it change? You see, change is always happening. I mean, I'm a blonde, but it's not natural. You know what I mean? My hair was getting lighter. I had to work with it. Change is happening. Change in our relationships. Change in our careers. Change in our life. And what I also know is that no matter what situation you have gone through or are going through, if you give it to me, I will help you find the silver lining. By the time I was 18, I had moved 83 times. I used to feel sorry for myself for that, but let me tell you something. I'm really good at being lost and finding my way. I'm really good at making new friends. I'm really good at helping the new person navigate in and welcome them because I know what it's like to be the new person a lot. Many people can't imagine moving eight times, but because of moving 83 by the time I was 18, not only do I know how to navigate change, I know how to look for it, go after it, enjoy it. Be gentle with your story. You see, we all have a story, none worse or greater than the other, but a story. And the truth about most stories is there's a story behind the story. And one thing I don't often talk about is I'm a birth mom, but in my last two presentations, I brought it up. I had a child that I placed for adoption. And after both presentations, somebody from the audience came up and told me, I'm a birth mom. I never talk about it. I have a lot of shame about it. We all have different stories of success and failure and struggles in our lives. But we can either beat ourselves up and decide we are a failure or decide that that was just something, a development area for growth. We all have a story, and most of us have a secret story behind that story. What we do with that makes the difference in this world. Be courageous. Sign up for something that, I love SMART goals, but what if you signed up for something that wasn't achievable? That's what I do. In 99, I signed up for the AIDS ride. Minneapolis to Chicago. Didn't own a bike, had never slept in a tent, and didn't know anyone with AIDS. How hard could it be? <laughs> That's another whole presentation that we don't have time for today. But be courageous. Do something bigger and bolder. And make your goals not just about what's in it for me. I love the gratitude journal. But what I like to teach people is write the gratitude journal. When you get that down good, when you got your three to five things you're grateful for, which is great. Do it if you haven't started. But that's all about me. And what I know about this life is that when I take my gratitude and write on the other side of the page, what did I give away today? Did I give a smile? Did I open a door? Did I encourage someone? What did I give? Did I buy a cup of coffee? 
One of my favorite things to do is to go to small towns and look for an old couple that's there on Tuesday, 10% off day, and then buy their dinner and skip out of the restaurant with them never knowing. It brings me great joy to give. To those that have gone through much, they see much greatness. Every day is a gift to me. I don't have any problems. I'm sorry that I didn't raise my hand. I have opportunities for growth, and I'm growing every single day of my life. And the last one is be authentic. You see, I spent the first 20 years of my life wanting to be like someone else, anyone else. And if I'm honest with you, I wanted to be someone else. But I have learned that every struggle that I have walked through has put me on the hilltop to have compassion and kindness and empathy for those that walk through their own struggles. There's no better version of you. And if you compare yourself to anyone else, when you're having a good hair day and you look at hers and see its betters, it will steal all your joy. You see, comparison is the thief of all joy. And we are created to be joyful people, living our life to the fullest. It's okay to, be, to not be the expert and to be the exception. Some rules need to be broken. I was told I was stupid and useless, and today I'm being used by many to celebrate and encourage people. Whether I'm doing a keynote or I'm doing a half-day or all-day leadership training, I love what I get to do. I bring joy to myself by sharing love with the world because I was told I was dyslexic and illiterate. And today I've written three books, and I would love if you would take a book home with you. Thank you, and I invite you to join me.